Hello, welcome to this data modeling tutorial. My name is Ajay Kumar and I have more than 11 years of work experience in the data field. If you would like to know more about me, either you can check the description or also you can visit my LinkedIn profile. Please connect with me and feel free to ask any questions if you have anything related to your career or related to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss everything about data modeling. What is data modeling? Why do you need to use it? What are the different kinds of schemas, relationships? And not only that, at the end of this tutorial, you would find a workshop. This workshop is specifically designed if you are working on Power BI and you need to do the data modeling. This data modeling tutorial would help you to get the basics of data modeling as well as the advanced concepts in the data modeling. And whether you are a new in the data field or you are an experienced one, this tutorial is going to definitely help you out. So with the help of this tutorial, you can definitely kick off your career. And if you are already in the data field and you have experience, then this tutorial is also going to help you to clear some of the concepts probably that you don't know yet. So let's see what do we have in this tutorial. In this tutorial, in the very first section, we are going to discuss about the data modeling overview. That means introduction to data modeling. What is data modeling? Why do we need to use it? Then we will go through the data model and what are the different techniques in data modeling. Then we are also going to discuss why should you go for the data model? Can you work without the data model or not? And why to use the data model? We will also discuss the different types of data models and their characteristics. And then we will analyze the advantages and disadvantages of a data model. In the second section, you would get to know about the facts versus dimension. What is a fact table? What is a dimension table? And what is a primary key? What is a foreign key? Why do you need them into your data model? And also we're gonna discuss about the different types of facts and the dimensions. We will move forward after that and we will land into the section three, where you would get to know about the relationships in a data model. What is the relationship in a data model or in a database? Why do you need it? What are the different kinds of relationships? And also we are gonna have a small lab over there where you, where you would get to know about the relationships in a data model. Then we are gonna jump into the section four where you would get to know about the different schema in data modeling. What is the schema? What are the different kinds of schema? What are their advantages, disadvantages, how to use them? Everything you would get to know in this section. And in the last section of this tutorial, you will get a workshop. That means your hands-on experience on data modeling, where we are going to do the data modeling in Power BI. We are going to manage the different kinds of relationships. Also, you will get to know about the facts and the dimension table, how you can connect into your Power BI and how you design your data model. Please remember that this tutorial is not just about getting the theoretical knowledge about the data modeling. It's about the practical experience as well. Not only that, you will get some quizzes as well so that you can check your knowledge, what you have understood so far. One more thing guys, if you have any question, concern or any feedback, please don't forget to let us know. You can provide your feedback over here. Also, if you are not satisfied with this course, then you can get your money back. With that all said, let's move to our very first section where we are going to get to know more about data modeling. The very first question comes into our mind is, what is data modeling? Data modeling is the process of creating data model for the data to be stored in a database. This data model is a conceptual representation of a data objects, the association between different data objects and the rules. Now you know what is data modeling. So what would be our next step? Now we are going to have a look into another aspect of that. That why do we need to use the data modeling? Why is it so important? I'm sure you are working on many of the different reporting or BI system or even in the database modeling. But there also you need to do your data modeling. And if you don't know, then you should know this answer that why you need data modeling. Well, data modeling helps in the visual representation of data and enforces business rules, regulatory compliances and government policies on the data. Data models ensure consistency in naming convention, default values, semantics, security, while ensuring quality of the data. These are the main reasons that it's so important. Also, while fetching data from the different data sources, you also design your data model if you are working in Power BI. And it's not only in Power BI, any other data visualization tool or any database, you need to do your data modeling so that you can get the data from the different entities. Let's discuss the data model. Well. The data model is defined as an abstract model that organizes data description, data semantics, and consistency constraint of data. 
The data model emphasizes on what data is needed and how it should be organized instead of what operations will be performed on the data. Data model is like an architect's building plan, which helps to build conceptual models and set a relationship between data items. There are mainly two data modeling techniques. One is known as entity relationship model and another is known as UML or Unified Modeling Language. Now let's get into deeper and let's try to understand what are these. The very first, we are going to discuss about the Entity Relationship Data Model. So what is it? Well, Entity Relationship Model or ER Modeling is a graphical approach to database design. It is high-level data model that defines data elements and their relationship for a specified software system. You should also remember that an ER model is used to represent real-world objects. An entity has a set of properties. Now, an entity is a thing or object in real world that is distinguishable from surrounding environments. For example, your table in your database. Now let's talk about the UML diagrams or another data modeling techniques which I was saying unified modeling language. UML diagram stands for unified modeling language. It is a standard which is mainly used for creating object oriented meaningful documentation models from any software system present in the real world. It provides us a way to develop rich models that describe the working of any software hardware system. However, you should note over here, UML is an essential part of creating an object-oriented design of systems. It provides you means for creating powerful models and design for rational systems, which can be understood without much difficulties. Now, another question arises, why use data model? Well, in the very first part, I told you that what are the benefits of a data model or why actually you should use it. So now let's discuss some of the primary goal of using data model. The very first comes over here. It ensures that all data objects required by the database are accurately represented. That means you have your different tables, you have different objects into your database, and you have to get the data from them using your SQL language. So in that case, if you are using a relational database, how you can connect all those different objects, how you can get the data, that is gonna handle by the data modeling part. You should also remember that omission of data will lead to creation of faulty reports and produce incorrect results. That means if your relationships are not correct, if your data modeling is not correct, then definitely you won't get the accurate or correct results. A data model helps design that database at the conceptual, physical and logical levels. So I'm going to discuss each of them one by one later on that what is the conceptual data modeling, what is physical and what is logical. So these are the basically three different kinds of data modeling techniques that we use while doing the data modeling. Over here, you should also note that data model structure helps to define the relational tables, primary and foreign key and stored procedures. So whenever you are going to connect between two different tables, then there should be a relationship between them. In our data modeling, we generally do it using the primary and foreign key relationship. Another primary goal of data modeling is it provides a clear picture of the base data and can be used by database developers to create physical database. It is also helpful to identify missing and redundant data. And lastly, though the initial creation of the data model is labor and time consuming, in the long run, it makes your IT infrastructure upgrade and maintenance cheaper and faster. So these were the primary goal of using a data model. There can be many more cases, but that depends on the case to case, why you are using and what you are doing. Well, basically there are the three different kinds of data models, namely conceptual data model, logical data model, and physical data model. Conceptual data model is the data model that defines what the system contains. This model is physically created by business stakeholders and data architects. The purpose is to organize, scope, and define business concept and rules. So this is a very high level data model. Next to this comes the logical data model, which is going to define how the system should be implemented regardless of the DBMS, that is database management system. 
This model is typically created by data architects and business analysts. The purpose of this is to develop a technical map of rules and data structures. And lastly, the physical data model is the data model which describes how the system will be implemented using a specific DBMS system. This model is typically created by DBN developers and the purpose is actual implementation of the database. Now we are going to dig deeper into the different kinds of data models one by one. And the very first comes the conceptual data model. A conceptual data model is an organized view of database concepts and their relationships. The purpose of creating a conceptual data model is to establish entities, their attributes and relationships. In this data modeling level, there is hardly any detail available on the actual database structure. Business stakeholders and data architects typically create a conceptual data model. Now, let's consider an example. In the example, you can see you have two different tables, customer and product. These are your entities. The columns inside them are going to known as your attributes and the relationship between them is going to be your relationship. There are certain characteristics of a conceptual model. The very first is it offers organization wide coverage of the business concept. Secondly, this type of data models are designed and developed for a business audience. And lastly, the conceptual model is developed independently of hardware specifications like data storage capacity, location or software specifications like DBMS, vendor and technology. The focus is to represent data as a user will see it in the real world. Here, you should note a very important point that conceptual data models, known as domain models, create a common vocabulary for all stakeholders by establishing basic concepts and scope. Now we are going to discuss about logical data model. The logical data model is used to define the structure of data elements and to set the relationship between them. The logical data model adds further information to the conceptual data model elements. The advantage of using a logical data model is to provide a foundation to form the base for the physical model. However, the modeling structure remains generic. Here, you will see the table, customer and product and there is also certain characteristics for this logical data model. At this data modeling level, no primary or secondary key is defined. At this data modeling level, you need to verify and adjust the connector details that were set earlier for relationships. And if you talk about the characteristics of a logical data model, then you should remember it describes data needs for a single project but could integrate with other logic data models based on the scope of the project. Secondly, it designed and developed independently from the DPMS. Thirdly, data attributes will have data types with exact precisions and length. And lastly, normalization processes to the model is applied typically till third normal form. Now we are going to move to the last part, which is a physical data model. A physical data model describes a database specific implementation of the data model. It offers database abstraction and helps generate the schema. This is because of the richness of metadata offered by a physical data model. And if you don't know what is metadata, metadata is a data about a data. That means, suppose you have your different columns in a table. Now, what is the type of the data inside that? What is the length? So those are known as the metadata. That means data about data. The physical data model also helps in visualizing database structure by replicating database column, keys, constraints, indexes, triggers, and other RDBMS features. Here you define your primary and secondary key as well. So if we talk about the characteristics of a data model, the very first is the physical data model describes data need for a single project or application, though it may be integrated with other physical data models based on project scope. Secondly, physical data model contains relationship between tables that which addresses cardinality and nullability of the relationships. Thirdly, it develops for a specific version of a DBMS, location, data storage or technology to be used in the project. Number fourth, physical data model columns should have exact data types, lengths assigned and default values. And lastly, physical data model has primary and foreign keys, views, indexes, access profile and authorizations, etc. which are well defined inside it.
Okay, now we are going to discuss first the advantages of a data model. The main goal of a designing data model is to make certain that data objects offered by the functional teams are represented accurately. So, we are doing the data modeling so that we can get the accurate data while querying the data or while querying the database or while getting a information in a report. The second one is the data model should be detailed enough to be used for building the physical database. Thirdly, the information in the data model can be used for defining the relationships between tables, primary and foreign keys, and stored procedures. Also, data model helps business to communicate within and across the organizations. And data model helps to document data mappings in ETL processes. Lastly, another advantage is data model helps to recognize correct sources of data to populate the model. Now, we are going to discuss about some of the disadvantages as well. And the very first is, to develop a data model, one should know physical data stored characteristics. Secondly, this is a navigational system produces complex application development management. Thus, it requires a knowledge of the biographical truth. Thirdly, even smaller change made in structure requires modification in the entire application. And lastly, there is no set data manipulation language in DPMS. So these were some of the disadvantages of the data model. Now we are going to summarize it. So let's have a look at the summary, what we have done so far. The very first we learned data modeling is a process of developing data model for the data to be stored in a database. Then we learned data models ensures consistency in naming conventions, default values, semantics, security, while ensuring quality of the data. Then we also learn that data model structure helps to define the relational tables, primary key, foreign key, and stored procedures. Then we learn that there are three different kinds of data models that is conceptual, logical, and physical. Then we also got to know that the main aim of conceptual model is to establish the entities, their attributes, and their relationships. In case of logical data model, which defines the structure of the data elements and set the relationship between them. And finally, we also learned about the physical data model, which describes the database specific implementation of the data model. Here, you should remember that the main goal of a designing data model is to make certain that data objects offered by the functional team are represented accurately. The biggest drawback is that even smaller change made in structure requires modification in the entire application, which is a disadvantage of data modeling. So this is it for this first module. Before going into the fact and dimension table, we would get to know what is a primary key and what is a foreign key. It's just a brush up. I'm sure you already know the key differences between a primary key and a foreign key. It is for someone who is very new into data field. A primary key is used to ensure data in the specific column is unique. It is a column cannot have null values. It is either an existing table column or a column that is specifically generated by the database according to a defined sequence. For example, you can see a snapshot at the bottom left corner of your screen where I have a table named student and then I have another table named student course. So in the student table, student number is going to be used as a primary key because it doesn't have any null value and also all the records are unique. In fact, if we talk about the student name, that cannot be used as a primary key because it has duplicate data. And if I talked about the student form that has a null value, so this column also cannot be used as a primary key. Now, if you talk about the foreign key, so primary key in one table can be a foreign key for another table. But that means a foreign key is a column or group of columns in a relational database table that provides a link between data in two tables. If you need to join two tables, that means there should be some link. For example, over here, you can see that student table has student number as a one column. And the same column is in the student course table. However, in student course table, the same column has duplicate values. So definitely that cannot be used as a primary key. However, it can be used as a foreign key over here. So that is the main difference between a primary key and foreign key. Over here, you should remember one more thing that a primary key cannot contain null values. And why it cannot contain null values? Now moving forward, 
we are going to use this model or the diagram or a data model representation to depict what is a fact and what is a dimension table. Over here, the middle table, it's a fact marks table. This is your fact table and all other surrounding tables are known as your dimensional tables over here. So this is just for the representation only. We will talk about this later on. So let's move forward. So the very first question arises, what is a fact table? Well, a fact table is a primary table in a dimensional model. Why it's primary? Because all the measures or all the calculations are inside this table and this table basically contains numeric data only. However, it contains some non-numeric data also like for example transaction IDs, invoices IDs, etc. But that's a later part to discuss. Over here, you would notice two things. One is measurements and second is foreign key to the dimension table. Now, perhaps you are wondering what is a measure? In a data warehouse, a measure is a property on which calculations, for example, sum, count, average, minimum, maximum can be made. So generally, we need to use a lot of calculations, for example, total YTD, total MTD, total amount, etc. That all we do using calculations or the measures. Now we are going to move forward and this time we are going to see where is our fact table into our data model and over here this is a representation of a data model where you can see clearly your fact table is there all the foreign keys are in the fact table and those foreign keys are connected to all the dimensional tables where you will find your primary keys in the data model there can be different types of schemas for example this schema that you are looking over here it's a representation of a star schema. However, there are other kinds of schema as well, which we are going to discuss in our subsequent videos. Now, what is a dimension table? A dimension is the structure that categorizes facts and measures in order to enable user to answer business questions. Commonly used dimensions are people, products, place, and time. Well, Anything which is numeric, you can consider it as a fact and anything which is descriptive, you can consider it as a dimension. People and time sometimes are not modeled as dimensions as well. So please always be mindful about that. Let's come back to the same data model that I was just discussing a couple of minutes back. Here you will see that fact table has been surrounded by many other tables. For example, dim student, dim parent, dim manager, etc. All these are starting with DIM. That means these are dimensional tables. And all of these tables has their own unique property. For example, DIM student table has your student name, surname, etc. So these are the descriptive. Or you can, in another words, if you're going to work in Power BI, you can also say that dimension tables are going to help you to slice and dice the data so that you can see according to different dimensions. For example, if you would like to view the data for different countries then you can have a slicer as a country names and this is going to come from the country table which is another dimensional table now let's discuss some of the key differences between a fact and a dimension table fact table contains measurements metrics and facts about the business process while the dimension table is the companion to the fact table which contains descriptive attributes to be used as query constraining. Fact table is located at the center of a star or snowflake schema, whereas the dimension table is located at the edges of the star or snowflake schema. So what is a star schema or what is a snowflake schema or what is a galaxy schema? Everything we are going to discuss in our upcoming videos. Fact table is defined by the green or its most atomic level, whereas dimension table should be wordy, descriptive, complete, and quality assured. Fact table helps to store report labels, whereas dimension table contains detailed data. And lastly, fact table does not contain a hierarchy, whereas the dimension table contains hierarchies. So these were the key differences between a fact and dimension table. Over here, we are going to have a look about the differences between dimension table versus fact table. So guys, over here, you would find these all other facts are more or less like the same as I just explained to you previously. If you would like to read it, please pause your screen and have a look. If you have any question or concern, you can let us know.
Now question comes, what are the different types of facts? There are basically three types of facts, additive, semi-additive and non-additive. We cannot apply all the functions such as sum, max, mean, average, percentage, etc. that we use for the calculations to all the facts. So based on that, we have the three different kinds of facts. So the very first comes additive. Measures should be added to all dimensions. That means you can apply all the functions over there. You can apply max, mean, percentage, average, or sum, etc. Everything on that. Semi-additive measures. In this type of facts, measures may be added to some dimensions and not with others. For example, consider the price or currency rate. Sum is meaningless on rate. However, average function might be useful. And lastly, the non-additive one. It stores some basic unit of measurement of a business process. Some real-world examples include sales, phone calls, and orders. For example, 5% of profit margin, revenue to asset ratio, etc. All these are non-additive facts. Here, these are based on the data warehouse concepts because in data warehouse, we use the facts and dimensions while doing the data modeling. The very first is confirmed dimensions. Confirmed dimension is the very fact to which it relates. This dimension is used in more than one star schema or data mart. Generally, whenever we are building a galaxy schema, so in that galaxy schema, we have more than one fact table. And then we are joining those two fact tables using dimensional tables. And those dimensional tables, we have dimensions inside them. And those dimensions are going to be known as confirmed dimensions. Next is outrigger dimensions. A dimension may have a reference to another dimension table. These secondary dimensions called outrigger dimensions. This kind of dimension should be used carefully. For example, you have country data. Then next to country, you have your provinces, then cities, and all these are connected with each other. So those are known as outrigger dimensions. Then it comes with the shrunken roll up dimension. Shrunken roll up dimension are subdivision of rows and columns of a base dimension. These kind of dimensions are useful for developing aggregated fact tables. Dimension to dimension table joins. While well, it's very important, dimensions may have reference to other dimensions as I just discussed. It can be product to subcategory as well. However, these relationships can be molded with outrigger dimensions. As I have just given you example of country, states, etc. Next comes the role playing dimensions. That means a dimension can play more than one role. For example, your date. Date can be any. Date can be date of birth or date can be date of order. A single physical dimension helps to reference multiple times in fact tables as each reference linking to a logically distinct role of the dimension. So, as I just said, date can be many. Like date can be date of birth, date can be date of order or date can be anything else. Now it comes to the junk dimensions. It is a collection of random transaction codes, flags, or text attributes. It may not logically belong to any specific dimension. So generally, we keep them in separate tables. For example, flags, indicators, etc. Then comes the degenerated dimensions. Degenerated dimensions are without corresponding dimension. It is used in the transaction and collection snapshot of fact tables. This kind of dimension does not have its dimension as it is derived from the fact table. Next is swappable dimensions. They are used when the same fact table is paired with a different version of the same dimension. And lastly is the step dimensions, which are sequential processes like web page events. Mostly have a separate row in a fact table for every step in process. It tells where the specific steps should be used in the overall session. So all these were the different kinds of dimensions. If you would like to know more, you can read about more data warehousing concepts and there you will get you know. So what's next? In our next video, we are going to discuss about the relationships in database. It is very important for you to get to know what are the different kinds of relationships. There can be one to one, one to many or many to many. And it is also very important to get to know which kind of relationship you use when or which kind of relationship you should avoid. Everything you will get to know in our next video. So please stay tuned. What is a relationship in database? A relationship 
In the context of databases is a situation that exists between two relational database tables when one table has a foreign key that references the primary key of the other table. Relationships allow relational databases to split and store data in different tables while linking disparate data items. What is a foreign key? What is a primary key? I have already discussed in the last video. If you don't know, please go and watch that video once more. Whenever we are working on a relational database, we need to get the information. We need to query the information using SQL language. And in order to get the information, we should relate tables from one and another that we do using primary and foreign key relationship. But how these relationships are going to actually work, we will get to know in this video. A relational database is a type of database that stores and provides access to data points that are related to one another. Relational databases consist of tables, columns, rows, keys, and relationships between them. And there are many more data objects over there in a relational database. So you should brush up your concepts regarding the database or database fundamentals if you don't know. And if you have any specific query, you can ask me. So this is a kind of a data model that we prepare in Power BI. But similarly, you can do as a tabular model as well if you are working with SQL Server Analysis Services. Data model are going to be more or like the same. It just depends how you are going to relate your different tables. And in our very first video, we have already discussed what is a data model, what are the different types of data models, etc. Let me show you something over here. Right now in my Power BI, I'm designing a data model. I always suggest everyone that you should spend 70 to 80% of your time on data modeling, whether you are working in Power BI or database or anywhere else. Reason being, this is the most critical part in your job. Once it's going to be all right, then everything is going to be all right. So over here, you can see that it's quite messy because there are lots of tables and you can zoom it though over here, but it's not going to give you the complete view over here. But for you, I have divided this into the different parts where we are going to discuss the different types of relationships. So let's first go through the different kinds of relationships. Then we will see in a demo how you are going to manage these relationships and what are these relationships. There are basically three different types of relationships, one to one relationship, one to many, and many to many relationship. So what are these? Let's discuss one by one. The very first comes one to one relationship. That means in one table item, you would have correspondingly only one item in another table. For example, you have two tables, sales and sales order, and these are connected using sales order line ID. So there would be only one record corresponding to sales in sales order table. And also if you would reverse it, that means in sales order table, if you have one record, then also you would have correspondingly only one record, not the multiple records. So this is known as one to one relationship. Second comes one to many relationship. That means in one table, you have one record, but corresponding to that in another table, you would have many records. For example, let's talk about date. So date is our dimensional table. And in date table, we have the unique values only. We don't have any duplicate values. But corresponding to that in sales table, there would be multiple values of date. Why? Because in sales table, we have many orders or we have many records for one date. For example, suppose I'm working in a manufacturing company and I have my order dates. So my sales table has my order date. And when I'm going to connect this with my date table, so corresponding to one date, I can have multiple orders. That means there would be multiple records over there. Similarly, you can consider it with the target table or sales to product table and all. By this means simply that you would have multiple records corresponding to one record. And whenever we are designing the data model, it's our preference generally to have one to many relationship. One would be towards your dimensional table and many would be towards your sales table. In this diagram, you can see that star mark is always corresponding to the many relationship and one is for your one relationship. That means where you have the unique record. So that's how it's going to work. Now, before going to the many to many relationship, we would talk about the cardinality. What is cardinality? So guys, cardinality describes the relationship between two data tables by expressing the minimum and maximum number of entity occurrences associated with one occurrence of a related entity. Either there is a relationship or not. Connectivity is the relationship between two tables. It can be one to one or one to many. So with this diagram, you would understand what is the cardinality. That means how many relationships are there. And connectivity is simply a relationship, which is between the primary and foreign key. 
Now let's discuss about many to many relationship. So here you can see your order table is there, then you have your fulfillment table. And these are connected using the order line. And in order table also, you would have the multiple records of order line. And corresponding to that in the fulfillment table, you have multiple records of that order line as well. So that's how these are in many to many relationship. You should know that many to many relationship causes duplication in database. Duplication causes false results from queries. That means it's highly likely that you would get ambiguity when you are using many to many relationships. And also there are adverse effects on the performance of your report or your data model when you are using many to many relationship. So you should be very much aware about when you are going to use many to many relationship. One good case to choose a many to many relationship can be between your two dimensional tables or maybe when you are applying the row level security into your data model then also you may use the many to many bidirectional relationship over there. Now let's see how to prevent duplication. The solution is generally to use a bridge table or join tables. In this diagram you will see product component is a bridge table which is between the product and component table. So it's taking one side the component ID, another from the product ID, and then you are joining these tables. Between product and product component, you will see there's a one-to-many relationship. Over here, double bars means one relationship. And where you see this triangle kind of many lines over there, this is many relationship over there. And similarly, between product component to your component. So ideally, between your product and component table, you have many-to-many -many relationship. Entity relationship diagrams helps to make and understand entity relationship data model. That's why I always try to first draw your entity relationship diagram so that you can understand it better. So let's discuss some view over here before jumping into our demo. Relationship database has the ability to create meaningful information by joining tables. Joining tables helps to understand the relationship between the data and tables. Besides, relationship database eliminate data redundancy. Relational databases has three relationship tables. Relational database has three relationships between tables that is one to one, one to many, and many to many. Many to many relationship is harder to understand than other relationships. That's why I always suggest be careful before using this relationship. The bridge table makes the database and relationship easy to understand and it prevents data redundancy. Now let's get back to our Power BI file where we will try to explore these relationships. I'm over here once again. So the very first, we are going to see one to many relationships. So as I mentioned that you can see in this data model, there's a fact table and around fact table, there are many dimensional tables such as dim date, dim sales territory, dim currency, dim customer, dim promotion, and dim product. All have a relationship with the fact table and these dimensional table and fact table has a one to many relationship, star corresponding to many and this one corresponding to one side of the relationship. Always remember that arrow is going to go from one side to many side. Now, if you would like to edit this relationship, you can do that. Just double click on any arrow and here you can edit it. If you would see over here, you would see one to one, one to many and many to many relationship. Then there's a cross filter directions, which you can set single or both, depends on your situation. And then you can choose your columns as well while creating the relationships over here. Now I'm going to cancel this. There is one another way to manage your relationships in Power BI. You can directly come over here, manage relationships, and here you can even select auto detect relationships, or you can edit or you can delete. So all four options are available over here. So it depends on you what you want to use. Now let me show you one-to-one -one relationship. So over here I have two tables, usernames and test. Over here I have one username, so here then there's a major, and there is a task name and user. Between that, one user corresponding to the another user in the test table and they have one record corresponding to another one record only. That's why this is my one-to-one -one relationship. And over here you will see the arrow is going in both directions. That means it's a bidirectional. That means you can filter one table using another or another table using the very first table. So that's how bidirectional relationships are going to work. Lastly, many-to-many -many relationship. It's just for the depiction purpose only. As I mentioned, when you have multiple records corresponding to one record in one table and vice versa, then you would have this kind of relationship. You can consider with an example too. For example, in one school or in one class, there are many students. So one teacher is teaching many students and also one student is being taught by many teachers. For example, a math lecturer is coming into the class. He's teaching many students. But if we take one student out of those many students, then he is going to be taught by 
many different lectures, not only math. It can be English, it can be social science, it can be a drawing or any other subject. So that's why there is a many-to-many -many relationships over here. So guys, these were the different kinds of relationships in a data model. Now, what we are going to do next? In our next video, we are going to talk about star schema versus snowflake schema. So please stay tuned for the next video. See you in the next video. Let's discuss very first, what is DB schema? Over here, DB refers to the database. The database schema is its structure described in a formal language supported by the database management system. The term schema refers to the organization of data as a blueprint of how the database is constructed. Over here, you should note that a database schema is like a skeleton structure representing our logical view of a whole database. It devises all the constraints applied to the data in a particular database. Whenever organizations engage in data modeling, it leads to a schema. Now another question arises, what is multidimensional schema? Multidimensional or MS schema is specially designed to model data warehouse systems. The schemas are designed to address the unique needs of very large database design for analytical purpose. We generally have two kinds of system, OLTP and OLAP. OLAP are designed to do analysis on historical data when you have a huge amount of data. However, OLTP databases are transactional databases. OLTP database example can be your banking database or it can be your sales database. However, OLAP, OLAP are the collection of your multiple databases or in an organization you can say enterprise data warehouse system is your OLAP data warehouse system or database. Now there are mainly three kinds of schemas available that is star schema, snowflake schema and lastly the galaxy schema. But as I discussed in my previous video, mainly we are gonna work on the star schema only. But in complex scenarios, in big organization, there can be a need of snowflake schema or galaxy schema. Let's discuss all of them one by one. The very first comes the star schema. Star schema in data warehouse, in which the center of the star can be one fact table and a number of associated dimension tables. We have already discussed in our previous video what is a fact table and what is a dimension table. If you haven't watched that video, please go back and check that video once more. It is known as star schema as its structure resembles a star. The star schema data model is the simplest type of data warehouse schema. It is also known as star join schema and is optimized for querying large data sets. In Power BI, whenever we are doing the data modeling, in 99% scenarios, we will always stick with the star scheme only. You will get to know everything in our last video of this session, which is going to be the next video, where I have explained with the demo how to connect with your table, how to design a data model in Power BI, and what are all the points that you should always remember in order to design your data model. This is a representation of a star schema. Where you can see in the middle, you have a fact reseller sales table, which is a fact table. And that middle table or the fact table is surrounded by many dimension tables, which are like dim sales territory, dim product, dim date, dim reseller or dim employee table. Also, you should note that all the foreign keys you would find in the fact table, while all the primary keys you would find in your dimension tables. Dimension tables are going to represent the descriptions of different aspects of your data objects. However, fact table would generally have your measures or your numeric items likewise. Also over here, you should note that in a fact table, you can find some other items too, apart from the foreign key. There can be values, there can be some transaction IDs, or there can be some invoices IDs as well. Now let's move on the characteristics of star schema. In star schema, every dimension is represented with the only one dimension table. Dimension tables generally be used to slice and dice the data, whether we are using multidimensional modeling or tabular modeling or data modeling in Power BI. The dimension table should contain the set of attributes. Also, the dimension table is joined to the fact table using a foreign key, as I just explained. In star schema, the dimension table are not joined to each other because that's going to happen in the snowflake schema. Fact table would contain key and measures only the star schema is easy to understand and provide optimal disk usage. That's why it's being used mainly. 
That's why it's being used majorly in all the data modeling concepts. The dimension tables are not normalized. For instance, in the previous image, product ID does not have the product lookup table as an OLTP design would have. This is our design that I'm just referring to. Over here, product table is there, dim product, and there's no lookup table for product. The schema, that is star schema, is widely supported by all the BI tools. So this is another reason that majority of the BI systems are going to use the star schema only. Now let's discuss about the Snowflake schema. Snowflake schema in the data warehouse is a logical arrangement of tables in a multi-dimensional database such as the ER diagram resembles a Snowflake shape. A Snowflake schema is an extension of a star schema and it adds additional dimensions. The dimension tables are normalized which splits data into additional tables. I have briefly described it in my previous video where I have told you that for example you have country table then you can have other dimensional tables related to the country. That means country to your province to your city. All these tables are related to each other and we can join these dimension tables to one another. That would be your snowflake schema. Over here, you can see in this image, there's a fact table, there are the dimension tables around that, but as I just mentioned, Snowflake schema is just the extension of the star schema. And over here, if you will see the dealer table on the top, it has two other dimension tables related to this. That is, dimension table would be location and the country. So those are the extension of the dealer table. And that's why we are calling it the Snowflake schema. Not only that, if you would look at the right side of the fact table, there is a product table and related to product there is a variant table. And these are also connected. That means that when the dimension tables are connected to other dimension tables, it becomes your snowflake schema. There are certain characteristics of the snowflake schema too. The very first is the main benefit of the snowflake schema, it uses smaller disk space, while the star schema uses considerably more disk space. In Snowflake schema, it is easier to implement a dimension is added to the schema due to multiple tables query performance is reduced. The primary challenge that you will face while using the Snowflake schema is that you need to perform more maintenance efforts because of the more lookup tables. So that's another reason that we generally don't use the Snowflake schema. Now let's discuss the differences between the star schema and Snowflake schema. In star schema, hierarchies of the dimensions are stored in the dimensional table. However, in case of the snowflake schema, hierarchies are divided into separate tables. In star schema, fact table surrounded by dimension tables. However, in case of snowflake schema, one fact table surrounded by dimension table which are in turn surrounded by another dimension tables. In star schema, only a single joint creates the relationship between the fact table and any dimension tables. However, in contrast to the star schema, in Snowflake schema requires many joins to fetch the data. In star schema, database design is simple, while in case of Snowflake, it's quite complex. Star schema denormalized data structure and queries also run faster. However, in case of Snowflake schema, you would find that database structure or the data structure is quite normalized and it would take more time to fetch the data because it has to go through the multiple tables or lookup tables to fetch the data. In star schema, high level of data redundancy is there. However, in case of snowflake, it's very low. In case of star schema, the single dimension table contains aggregated data. However, in case of snowflake, the data splits into different dimension tables. In star schema, queue processing is faster. However, in case of snowflake schema, queue processing might be slow because of the complex join. Lastly, in case of star schema, it offers higher performing queries using star joint query optimization. Also, tables may be connected with multiple dimensions. In contrast to this, in case of Snowflake schema, the schema is represented by centralized fact table, which unlikely connected with multiple dimensions. So these were the major differences between the star schema and the Snowflake schema. Now we come to the point, what is a galaxy schema? Whenever we work on the databases or database structure or database modeling, we generally hear only about the star schema and snowflake. But it really comes to the picture about the galaxy schema. So now let's dig into this one. What is it? A galaxy schema contains two fact tables that share dimension tables between them. It is also called fact constellation schema. The schema is viewed as a collection of stars, hence the name galaxy schema. But generally, in some of the interviews, I have experienced that people call it constellation schema only. And they generally ask, 
what is a constellation schema? They never mentioned it's a galaxy schema. So as you can see on your screen, we have dimension tables and there are two fact tables. If someone is going to ask you how you are going to connect two fact tables, so your answer should be using dimension table. So over here, as a bridge, we use the dimension table. And in overall, if you will see this picture, you will find that there are two star schema. So if you will see on the right hand side, you will find that there is a fact table, which is a product table. And this fact table is surrounded by the dimension tables. And same on the left hand side, fact table revenue is surrounded by the dimension tables. So basically using the dimension table as a bridge, you connect these two fact tables. And this schema is known as your galaxy or constellation schema. Now, the very important point over here is in galaxy schema, shares dimensions are called confirmed dimensions because these dimensions are being shared with other tables as well or dimensions as well. Now let's discuss the characteristics of galaxy schema. The very first is the dimensions in the schema or the galaxy schema are separated into separate dimensions based on the various levels of hierarchy. For example, if geography has four levels of hierarchy like region, country, state and city, the galaxy schema should have four dimensions. Moreover, it is possible to build this type of schema by splitting the one star schema into more star schemas, as I just mentioned. The dimensions are large in schema, which is needed to build based on the levels of hierarchy. This schema is helpful for aggregating fact tables for better understanding. So these were the most important characteristics of the galaxy or constellation schema. In the next video, I'm going to design a Power BI data model. And there again, I'm going to revise all the concepts that we have learned so far in data modeling. See you in the next video. Data modeling in Power BI. This is very important and critical concept that you should be aware about if you want to make your career as a Power BI developer or if you want to work in data analytics with Power BI. In this video, you would learn a lot of things regarding the data modeling and in our previous videos, we have already covered the concepts of what are the relationships, what are different types of schemas, what is data modeling and how it's going to help you to make your career into data analytics. You are going to learn a lot of new concepts such as how to create relationships between your data sources or the different data tables that you have. Then you would learn how to create a new field using the calculated column. After that, we are going to discuss how to optimize your data model by hiding certain fields. That means the unused data fields that you are not going to use in your report from your data sets. Then we are also going to learn how to create different measures in order to perform the calculations in your data model that you are going to use in your Power BI report. After that, we are also going to create a table using the DAX, that means your calculated table, and we are going to define the relationship between the newly created calculated table with the other tables in your data model. And at last, I'm going to show you how you can format the data and field, how you can also create the different calculated column inside the same table. So what are we ready for? Let's get started. Before going further, I would like to highlight one thing over here. You have to go first options and settings, and under options, there's an option to detect relationships automatically. So, in options and settings, you would come under data load and there you would find the different settings. One of them is detect column types and headers for unstructured sources. Then, there is also one more setting, which is the time intelligence. So guys, I recommend always switch it off, unless you are sure that you would like to use this. What it's going to do, it's going to create an automatic hierarchy from your data table. And because of that, there would be a lot of extra data is going to generate it to your data model which can impact the performance. So this is your first lesson for this video, how to reduce your data set size. Another one, you can go to your current file, this data load for your current file, and there you will find the type detection, then there's a relationship. This is the option which is very critical to know. If you would like to auto detect new relationship after data is loaded, then you can check in. Otherwise, you can uncheck this one. But for this video, I'm gonna keep it as it is so that you will get to know how it's gonna detect the relationships but I'm going to show you how you can even change the relationship if you would like to or even you can delete those relationships from your data model. Over here, you will just get data from Excel book or you can go directly over here and get data. Then there is one more option over here, import data from Excel. So just click over here and I'll go down and there I have Adventure Works DW 2012. My all the data is inside this into different tabs. I can get it like the tables from the database. Now, as you can see, there are the different tables listed over here. You can click any of these tables and you will get the table. 
So let's see, for example, factory to net sales table. It's going to load with a preview. You can check over here what is inside this table, what are the columns and all. And once you decide, okay, this is the table, just click on this one. Then you can also select the corresponding tables. Once you decide what all are the tables that you need, you can click transform data. If you would like to make any of the changes in terms of data format, data types, or you want to remove any of the columns, or you want to perform anything. Now let's click on transform data. And here you can see your part query editor is available over here. Now I have these different tables, it's saying refresh, so you can ignore it, or if you would like to refresh, you can refresh all of these tables. Now I can see that all the data has been loaded. In the in date table, I want to change just one column name, which is my full date key. So you can just double click over there and rename it. That's the one thing. Then you will see there are lots of unnecessary fields in this table which I don't want. As I mentioned in the agenda, that I'm gonna show you how to reduce the data size. So this is another way that you can reduce the data size from your Power BI data model. So what you can do, you can just remove the unnecessary columns from this table. So there are a couple of options to remove them. Either you can just use this remove column option or you can also click on this choose column over here and select choose columns. So out of that, you can uncheck whichever you don't need. So like this, you can choose the columns over here, whichever you need, whichever you don't need and just click OK. Otherwise, there is one more option. You can just click on this remove columns and there is remove columns or remove other columns. That means if I select this column over here and I say remove other columns, all other columns are going to remove. So for example, let's click. So it's going to only select one column, other columns have been removed. Now, if you want to undo this step, just come over here on your right hand side and remove this step from here. So now you're going to get back over here. So this is the way you can reduce your data model size after removing unnecessary data from your data model or the tables that you have loaded into your Power BI. Now, once you make the changes, you can also look for the other tables, whether you need them or not. So I'm again going to do it quickly for all the tables. So guys, I have now removed all the unnecessary columns from my data model. Also, I have checked the other settings over here and it looks fine to me. Now, what you have to do, you have to come over here and just close and apply. Now our data has been loaded into Power BI and you can see all the tables under this fields pane, dim date, dim product, dim sales, dim sales territory and factor into max sales table. If you would like to see how your data model is appearing or what is your data model diagram, you can come over here. And over here you can even zoom in and zoom out from this bottom slider. You can see your, all the tables are appearing over here. If you would like to auto arrange this layout, you can do that. Just click on this plus button at the bottom line and over here just click on this auto layout. It's going to auto arrange your tables over here. But right now I don't like it, so I can arrange myself too. You can switch on these properties over here if you would like to. We will discuss this in a bit. Now you can see all the tables are clearly appearing over here. However, whenever you are working on Power BI, make sure your table name is very much user friendly. That means the business people also can understand these table names. For that, I really don't think so. Dim product, dim date, etc. makes sense. Rather than that, you should keep them very neat and clean what you can do you can change these table names for example you just like this table come to this property over here rather than big product i'll just say it's my product table now we are coming into the next one where i told you you can format your each field like for example date time field how to format them and how to use them for so that you have to select your table over here you would see the properties pane this is your table name you can even put the description or you can give it the synonyms as well if you would like to here you can even apply the row label to which row you want to apply the label and then there is a key column. So now you can also see whether you want to hide certain column or not or you can go to the advanced settings where you can see what is the storage mode of this table whether it is import, direct or dual mode. Dual mode means it can be import and direct to this one. Now this column I selected over here and as soon as you select this column it is going to show you the date time format. So you can select over here the date time format which I generally select this one month, day and year or you can even select any other format that you would like to use. So there are many other formats available. So let's select this one. So now whenever you would work on this, this format is going to be same. But also if you will come into this data preview pane, over here also you can select a format. So just select this one. Right now since I already did it, it's going to show you in this format only but you can change from here as well. So this is a way that you can change the format and not only for that every other column you can change it like over here it's whole number you can change to other if you would like to. So this is a part of data modeling when you have to define your data types for each and every field. Now let's get back over there. Here you will notice that there is no relationship between the state table and internet sales table. 
There is a reason for that and the reason is very simple. Power BI can detect the relationships automatically once the name of the fields are seen. If it's not seen, you have to do it manually, that means yourself. And how you can do that? You have to connect this date field over here to the date field over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect this date field to the order date. Though there is a ship date as well, so it depends whether you want to do it or not. So let's do that. So now it's going to detect this relationship. Always make sure that you are working on the star schema model as I mentioned in my previous videos. And over here, one is one side of the relationship and star mark is the many side of the relationships. Now this is the active relationship. But what if you also would like to make the inactive relationship? There are many DEX functions in Power BI that can use your inactive date relationship. For more videos over DEX functions, please don't forget to check the DEX Sundays on our YouTube channel. Now, if I would like to make one more relationship, then how to do that? For that, you have to again get this date field from here, just drag and drop to the ship date over here. And now, you can see that once you are going to select this relationship, which is with the dotted lines, that is your inactive relationship. Now, one very important point over here for the point of view of the certification or your knowledge or your interview, that in a Power BI data model, at a time, there can be only one active relationship. There cannot be more than one active relationship. However, inactive relationship, you can use it in order to define some of the DEX calculations like use relationship DEX. Okay, now we have talked about the relationships. We have these relationships over here into our data model. Now, what we are going to do, we are not going to connect this table over here. I am leaving it as it is. Reason being, this receiver table, you can select the key which you would like to connect with, the, for example, geography key or any other table if you would like to, but I'm not going to do any of these because I, right now I don't have and I'm going to get a disconnected table. So this is going to be my disconnected table. So whenever a table has no relationship with any other table in your data model, this is going to be a disconnected relationship and disconnected tables are very important to use. For the guys who are new to our channel or new over here, then I would like to tell you that I have already created certain videos on disconnected tables and how you can use them. Please don't forget to check them out. Here you can create a new column. I'm also going to create that and for that I'm going to show you one very quick trick how you can sort your month year name into your date table. So let's first do this new column then we will come to the calculated tables. So for that what I'm going to do, uh, first I need to select my table where I'm going to create it and then you can either click on these three rows and you can see new column or on the top you can just click the new column from this top ribbon. And I'm going to call it month year sort. So this is the column I'm creating. This is going to help me to sort my month here column. And for that, I'm also going to use the formatting options as well. And for that, first we have to use our year dex function. This is going to give you the year from the date column. So let's get the date column. Once you have this, you have to multiply it by 100. And then you have to add the month number into this one. Let's get the month number as well from my date column. Let's select this one. And here you can see that I have created this column. Just click over here or you can hit the enter button. So now you can see there is a number and with this number I can sort my month here column. But right now I don't have month here column. So we are going to create one more column and where we are going to use the format X function. So here I'm going to say month here and I'm going to use again the date column to format it. So format. Now you have to select first your column. So my column is date column. Select it over here, then you have to give comma, and here you have to define your format. I need MMM, then I need YY. So this is going to be my new column. So this is the way you can create your calculated columns in your data model as well. But generally, I don't advise to create the calculated column over here, rather than you should do your all the transformations inside your Power Query as much as possible. Otherwise, there are other performance consequences. Now, we have to sort this column because I'll show you one thing over here. If you will go over here and you get this month here column, just drag and drop over here into the canvas. And now it's not sorted actually. You can see this April, April, April and it doesn't make any sense. So let me just create into a chart as well. So as you can see, it's very easy to create any visualization in Power Bay. You just need to drag and drop. However, these are not in an ascending order, but we would like to see month number or month year number in ascending order. For that, you need to sort inside your table. How you can do that? For that, you have to select this column and you have to sort by this column, which we created recently, that is month year column. So come to this, and here we are going to sort by month year sort 
So let's find where is our column and this is over here. Now it's working and it's going to sort it out. So let's check now. And here you can see July, August, September, October, November, December, and January, February, and so on. So that means we have created a calculated column. With the help of that, we sorted out our data into our data table. Now, what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you one very important concept. In the Power BI, we have so many time intelligence text functions. For example, total MTD, total YTD, QTD. And if you would like to use them, first of all, you have to mark your field, that is your date field, as your date table. So what you can do over there, you have to first select your field over here, for example, this one date. And here, you have to go to the table tools, and there you have to mark as date table. So select this one. Once you will select this mark as date table, because now it's going to consider that this table is your date table, but there should be one column, which is going to be your date column. So select your date column over here, it's going to validate, and it's saying validated successfully and OK. If you won't do that, then your time intelligence functions are not going to work properly. Now we have done this and it's going to work perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create one more visualization over here, which is going to be my month year and my total YTD. So how to do that? For that, I'm going to create first new page and under my internet sales table, I'm going to create one new measure. So now I'm going to create one visualization over here. Let's select this visualization. You can expand it, drag and drop, very easy to handle. You have to mark a table as your date table, otherwise these are not going to work. Now let's check what is inside these relationships. So once you will check this relationship over here, first you have to select your table, which table you are selecting. Then you have to select another table. That means there are two tables where you are going to define your relationships. Now we have cardinality, one to one, one to many and many to many. Always remember these. Then also we have this cross filtering, single or both. Always try to work on single unless until it's really necessary to work on both. Both simply means you can filter with any direction. For example, if I'll make it both and I'll apply OK, then I can filter date table with the internet sales table or, and I can also do from internet sales table, I can filter this date table. However, I don't need it. So don't use it over here, otherwise it's going to go to a lot of performance. But you should also remember another thing over here. Both is going to be used whenever you have to apply security filter in both directions. As you can see, I select both, it's going to get highlighted over here. If you will select Single, it's not going to highlight. So click OK. So this is a one way. Another way, suppose you have so many tables into your data model that you would like to manage the relationships. For that, you can come on this top table. There's a manage relationship button. And here you can use either auto detect, new relationship if you want to define, select your tables, and then you can select the another table. For example, you have to first select your table, then you have to select your column where you are going to define your relationship, then select another table. And here you have to also select the column. For example, you are going to select over here the ship key, then you have to select the cardinality which you want to use. And also you can make this relationship active or inactive based on that. For example, if I select this, it's going to give you one error message over here because there is already a relationship defined over here. So that's what you can do over here. That's how you can manage your relationships. And if you would like to delete, you can just select this and click delete. So it's going to delete that relationship as well. And after that, you can close it. So this is another way to manage your relationships into your data model. There are many DEX functions, but we really don't have much of the time to define all the DEX functions. For that, you should go to our DEX and this tutorial and you should learn all the DEX functions from there. So this is the data model in Power BI. Now I'm going to show you one last trick that you can use it. For that, you have to just click on this bottom plus button. And over here, you have to go to this field screen. Suppose you have hundreds of tables, but you would like to see one table, how that table is connected with other tables how that table is connected with other tables. For example, in our case, product table. I can simply drag and drop over here. And what I can do, I can just right click over here and I'll say add related table. That means all the tables that is related to this product table only. So you can just do this. And it's only gonna show you which table is connected to this. But that doesn't mean the other tables are not existing. They are still in the play. And this is your old tables, which is your main data modeling diagram. Right now, I'm going to just use one very simple example over here. So, for example, you don't have this date table over here. I'm going to delete this date table from this data model and then I'm going to create a new date table. So, what you can do, just come over here and delete this from this model. It's going to delete this date table. Now, I need a date table. So, what I can do? You can come here under this data preview pane, go to this table tools over here and create a new table. We can create a new table in multiple ways. I have already made a video on our YouTube channel. Please go and check that out. 
First, you have to give it a name, and then you can use calendar functions. Though, so there are two calendar functions. One is calendar, another is calendar auto. Calendar function you have to define your minimum and maximum date, but calendar auto function will automatically detect the dates from your other tables, and based on that, it's going to generate a date table for you. So as you can see, you have created one date table. Now you can format it once more, which is this format that we are going to use. And over here, you can again start creating the new columns that you would like to use. So, one last point is over here that you have to again mark it as a date table. For that, you can come under again this tool, table tools, and mark it as a date table. Go there, select this date. Okay, so it's going to again validate and it's your date table. But over here, you will see the product internet sales table, sales territory table, table has their own relationship, but still the table has no relationship. So you have to again define that relationship over here. For that, just drag and drop, click this date table over here, and you can mark it over here wherever you would like to. So in this case, we have to find where is our date column, which is our order date. This is the one. So select it from date to this order date. Again, you can rearrange these tables the way you would like to and always try to keep table which are your disconnected tables. So this is your star schema. Here we have also created table, different columns and I have shown you everything. I'm sure guys, now you know how to work on a data model, how to get the data, how to define different relationships. And this is very easy. It's not so difficult and you can do it in a precise manner. What is next? Now guys, you can practice yourself and please let us know if you have any query or concern.